My district has changed some for the next uh, session or for the next uh, election, but I'm happy to say that I still have all of Brown County, which is also in Senate District 16, so that's very important to me. So I look forward to your support in the next uh, upcoming election, and thank you very much for the support that you gave me in this last two years. It's been an honor and a privilege to represent Brown County at the state capitol. The last couple of years we've made some real strides, and I think it's really important that we take a look at how important what we've been able to accomplish is. Uh, Paul talked about a lot of the vetoes that went on, and, and uh, we still were able to accomplish some really important things. If you remember two years ago, the topic pretty much all campaign was a $6 billion deficit, and how are you going to handle that? After the election, the February forecast came out in 2011, it was down to a $5.2 billion deficit. A year later, we had a $1.2 billion surplus. And that was, a, that was able to be done by a lot of tough decisions made by the legislatures and a lot of support from the uh, members or from the uh, uh, citizens of Minnesota. And happy to say that we're on a path now to where we're increasing our uh, reserves by about $50 million a month over the forecasted amount. So in 2012, the budget forecast for 2014-15 biennium was 1.1 to 1.2 billion. We've been able to reduce that about 50 million dollars a month. So we get into the next uh, session, we should have a pretty reasonable budget deficit to work with and should allow us to move forward to accomplish some of the other things we need to accomplish. Why was it important to uh, get that budget deficit down there and reduce spending? Because that's the basis of a good economy. And our economy is starting to change in Minnesota. And we now have decreased unemployment by about 2%. It was about 7.6% uh, when we went into office in, in February of 2011. And now it's about 5.6% for the last three, four months. It's been holding pretty stable. But we're hoping that that will continue on the downward spiral. And the reason that that's so important is because we have to have new jobs in Minnesota. If we're going to increase our revenues, there's two ways, two ways to really do it. You can increase your revenue through creating more jobs. Those jobs create income, which, in, which creates uh, income tax. Or we can raise the taxes. And we talk about raising taxes. We can look at other states that have done that and what the, what, what's happened with those states that have done it. California is a good example. As uh, Jim had talked earlier about, the Califor about California and, and Governor Brown. In 2011, Minnesota had a $5.2 billion deficit. California had an $8 billion deficit. One year later, Minnesota, through some cuts and some things like that, we ended up with a $1.2 billion deficit. Our projected deficit for the next biennium, 2014-15, is 1.1 to 1.2. California decided they were going to, instead of making a bunch of cuts, they felt the best choice was to raise taxes on the wealthy. They raised taxes on the wealthy. Their projected budget deficit for 2014 and 15 is $16 billion. They went the wrong direction. And now Governor Brown is saying they're going to have to raise taxes some more. But maybe they'll, in, they'll look at decreasing some spending. The point of it is several states have tried to do that, raise the taxes on the wealthy. And at the end of the day, what happens is the wealthy can move. And many of those folks, they pick up their, they pick their business up, they take it to another state, and they do move. And so the tax revenues are usually considerably lower than what's been projected. So we need to make sure that we stay on a plane to where we spend within our means and that we also make sure that we get new jobs created in the state of Minnesota. And in order to do that, we have to let businesses know that we're open for business. We have to have the green light on. We have to make sure that we have... Uh, reasonable energy cost. We have to make sure that we have a tax program in Minnesota that's favorable for the job providers. And we also have to make sure that uh, we do things to help them be able, able to get their permitting and stuff through quicker and make sure we cut the red tape and make sure that we have rules and regulations that allow Minnesota to attract new businesses, keep the ones we have, and allow them to grow. As Paul alluded to earlier, this is going to be a very, very important election. Governor Dayton is going nowhere, and if we would lose the majorities, it would take those folks about two weeks to wipe out everything we've accomplished in the last two years. And so we need to make sure that we can keep the majority in the House and the majority in the Senate so that we can move, keep moving the state forward.
and start to, and, and continue to grow jobs, continue to decrease unemployment, and make Minnesota a good place for people to uh, create jobs and people bring new business and things like that. So I appreciate your support that I received two years ago. I appreciate I appreciate the support and and your input that we've had when I've been at the Capitol and the Senate for the last two years. And I ask for your support again this evening. Thank you very much. We appreciate your coming out tonight and uh, helping the Republican Party out. Thank you.